How's everyone doing? I hope you're all doing great and I hope you're all staying safe. Today's video is going to be pretty interesting because we're going to be talking about an open source virtual reality headset as well as more third party accessories finally coming out for the Oculus Quest 2. And on the topic of DIY, I'm also going to be telling you guys about all the DIY mods that you can do for your Quest 2 to make it more comfortable because people have been DIY modding the Elite head strap and the original head strap because you know, Elite head straps are still breaking and not everybody wants to to get something that breaks. And I will also be telling you guys about somebody who has managed to get Linux running inside the Oculus Quest itself. Now this brings a lot of possibilities to the Oculus Quest, including running ADB right within the Oculus Quest itself and connecting to the Oculus Quest using ADB over Wi-Fi, running side quest inside the Quest. Now, I don't know if this is possible yet. However, these are just the possibilities that we are going to come to. So make sure to stay tuned because this one is action packed. So I have been pretty angry with Facebook recently especially with the latest news coming out about them banning people that have more than one headset and are using it to play at the same time. Now, that was a little bit confusing and it all got figured out in the end. As long as you're not playing on Facebook servers and the app allows single account multiplayer, you should be fine because that is the developer's wish and the developers allow it. Eleven Table Tennis even came out about this on Reddit. Yesterday, I saw my Discord talking about an open source virtual reality headset. So I was just there like, Ah, interesting. Now I know that this isn't necessarily new, however it did get updated recently and a lot of people don't know about this, so I'm just here spreading the information. Now if something is open source, that means everyone has access to it, you have full access to the code and you can change everything about it, meaning this is fully yours. You own this and no privacy concerns matter here. So this device is called Relativity and it is an open source virtual reality headset that you build and print yourself because parts of this are printed on a 3D printer, which is partially why it is so cheap. $200 for this entire headset. Now there are a few caveats that I will explain in just a second and especially now with the Oculus Quest 2, this might not be such a big deal anymore. However, if you like tinkering and value your privacy, this might just be the right way to go, especially if you're around that price point. However, let's go into the caveats, because as good as this thing sounds, there is a big problem that needs to be addressed instantly. No controller support. Now take that with a grain of salt, because the controller support, well, it's obviously there for every headset. As long as you're willing to get yourself a pair of index controllers and lighthouses, you'll get it. But for that price, you might as well be getting yourself a totally different headset. But if you are a tinkerer and you like playing around with things, well, this might be a fun game for you. This thing has full-blown SteamVR support as said on their website and experimental positional scaling. Their motherboard is just something they designed and runs Relativity firmware. It is based on an Atmel SAM 3X8E ARM Cortex M3 processor and uses an MPU 6050 as its IMU. The naked PCB and the components to solder on cost a total of $25. So again, this is something that you need to solder together yourself. This is completely DIY, which is why it's so interesting because you guys know I like DIY and technology and playing around with tech in its bare form which is why this is so interesting. The firmware is the relativity firmware and the screens. These are the exciting parts. 120 FPS screens at 2K or any display you want. So this is entirely up to you. However, the ones they're giving you here are 120 FPS at 2K, which is, you know, that is, that is so high. That is higher than the Oculus Quest 2. Again, this is, well, a little bit of playing around, but if you are willing to play around with it, this could certainly be quite interesting. And of course, on their website, you have their GitHub page, how to build it, all the things you will need to build it, and everything else. They also have a Discord, in case you want to actually bring this project into action and talk with them about it. They are also hiring though. At the very bottom of the page, it says they are starting a new company. This has nothing to do with relativity. They're building a standalone VR headset from the ground up alongside the OS and virtual world powering it. Now this is quite interesting because knowing that they're coming from a project that is entirely open source, I'd imagine privacy is going to be one of their main concerns. So relativity is definitely something that I will be looking into as well as constantly checking on that Deca Gear headset. So there you go. If you're interested in DIY and want to play around a little bit, this might just be a project for you. However, I do understand that it is pretty expensive and absolutely not for everybody. However, maybe you guys didn't know this thing existed. Well, here you go. Now you know it exists. And just in case you ever feel like playing around with it, 
it's there. Now let's move on to the elephant in the room. Accessories have finally started coming out for the Oculus Quest 2, and with Elite head straps still cracking, yes, it's still happening, I'm not sure what Facebook is actually doing about it, this might just be the right way to go. If you guys remember a company called Bezwin VR, they have made an Elite head strap for the Oculus Quest 1, a Halo head strap for the Oculus Quest 1, and it was very popular. It got very good reviews and was apparently super comfortable. Now, I never got it because I just modded the hell out of the Oculus Quest 1 head strap, but they have now modded that to work with the Quest 2. And with the review still being 4.5 stars, this thing looking super comfortable, it might just be the better option. They have two versions of this head strap, one for $59.99 and one for $69.99. And looking at the $69.99 one, it seems to be much better built than the Oculus Elite head strap, which is, well, a good thing, but also a bad thing at the same time. Because you'd expect Oculus to have their official accessories up to scratch and not snapping on everyone. Now, people are saying that these are snapping due to improper use and just ripping the headset off your head instead of untightening the knob on the back. However, I'm not sure about that. It does look pretty flimsy. Now, I have pre-ordered one, still waiting on it, so I guess we'll see when it arrives. You might want to watch a few reviews first. I don't have this. I might try contact them, see if they want to send one over for a review. However, if they don't, a bunch of YouTubers have already reviewed it. So if you are thinking about it, go check them out and uh, maybe think about getting this instead of the Elite head strap from Oculus in case you're worried about that breaking. Plus this just looks like a better head strap overall, not even gonna lie. Now do keep in mind that for the Oculus Quest 2, this does require a little bit of DIY modding. All of that is within their Amazon page right here, shows you exactly how to do it all you're going to need to do is create yourself a little spacer and you should be good to go. So that is something you might want to think about if you're looking for a better head strap for your Quest 2. I am also happy to say that AMVR has officially updated their listing on Amazon to show that their grips do work with the Oculus Quest 2, which is great. So if you guys are looking for grips for the Oculus Quest 2, the AMVR ones are definitely ones to consider. I actually have them on my Rift Desk controllers and I have tried to put these onto my Oculus Quest 2 controllers and they fit just fine. The great thing things about these is that they are elastic, which means they will fit pretty much every hand nice and comfortable. So if you guys are thinking about buying yourself grips, these are really nice ones to think about. And you do get a few different colors within the package, and you get to choose which ones you like most. These are super comfortable and I would definitely recommend them. I will have a link to these down in the description below. So going back to the topic of DIY, there's a lot of DIY mods you can currently do on the Quest 2 if you don't want to spend the money and if you have a 3D printer. Steve Nose actually did a great video on a completely 3D printed head strap for the Oculus Quest 2, or at least something that goes onto the back of the head strap. It had like full blown ear cups and everything. It actually looks pretty cool. I tried 3D printing it, but I only have an Ender 3 and it didn't fit on the print bed. But there's a lot of other mods you can do like this, and scrolling through Reddit, <laughs> there seems to be a lot of people modding either the original head strap or even the Elite head strap itself. And I have no doubt that this specific mod that I'm looking at right now makes the headset more structurally sound, because I think that the little part at the top holds it a little bit more together. Not only that, but of course it must make it more comfortable. If people are doing it, it must be better. So if you guys have a 3D printer, I would recommend jumping onto Thingiverse and checking out what you can print for your Oculus Quest 2, and even Quest 1, because yes, things are still coming out for that. There's really a lot of people coming out with accessories and mods that you can make yourself at home. And that is pretty exciting because DIY is not only usually cheaper, but it's usually a way of getting something faster and sometimes even making it more comfortable because you have full customizability over it. So, you know, might be worth checking out. <coughs> Two seconds, guys, my throat is a little dry. Mysticalstore.com. I am definitely going to choke every time I try to drink from that. <laughs> Talking about people being creative about the Oculus Quest 2, somebody got the Linux environment running inside the Oculus Quest 2. Now you may be like, hey, what's the point of this? Well, there's actually a lot of reasons you might want to do that. SideQuest supports Linux, and if you can get Linux running inside a VM, using no VNC to connect to it from a browser inside your Oculus Quest, well, that means you can officially run ADB inside the Oculus Quest itself. And how you may do this, you may ask. Well, ADB over Wi-Fi 
ADB over Wi-Fi is a thing, and if that VNC can connect to the Oculus Quest ADB protocol using ADB over Wi-Fi, you can officially initiate SideQuest and other ADB mods straight inside your headset, meaning you would no longer need a computer to sideload things like virtual desktop and everything else. So to me personally, this is super exciting because this means we might finally need no computer at all. And you guys know how much of a fan I am of the no computer saga to sideload everything straight to your Oculus Quest. Now, looking at the Reddit thread right here, which will be down in the description below, by the way, it is the XFCE desktop environment, which means Linux, of course, and I am a huge fan of Linux, and he has it running in Termux, which is actually an app I have on my Android phone, and he has it visible in Firefox reality via no VNC. And as you can see right there, he has a desktop environment straight inside his Oculus Quest, just inside the Oculus Quest, which is absolutely crazy. Because again, the possibilities once you get an operating system actually running inside the Oculus Quest are pretty much endless, we just need to figure them out. So absolute props to this guy, Eternal Density, incredible. And if anybody has done this before him, please reach out to me via the comment section. I want to know what you guys are doing. I want to know what you guys are up to. Maybe we can figure something out. Maybe we can find some new cool ways of doing stuff. And again, I'm just the messenger. I'm giving absolute credit to this guy. I didn't think of this, but I am super, super excited about it. Now, yesterday I saw a comment asking me to check something out. And because I read most of the comments and I value your guys' opinions, I decided I will check it out. And this seems to be another problem with the Oculus Quest 2. So now we're going to move on to defects because I think a lot of people are finally coming out with their defects and it's not a good thing. And I'm going to come out with mine. So it seems that a lot of people are getting blurring inside the Oculus Quest 2. Now you may be thinking this is due to IPD. However, in that Reddit thread, people are saying it's not due to the IPD. This does seem to be a list of people wearing glasses. I myself wear glasses. However, as I have said before, I only have one eye. So technically that doesn't blah, 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 blah. But blurring inside the Oculus Quest 2 for me personally isn't a problem, but people do seem to be affected and it does seem to be a real one. And I'm just here thinking, how and why? How are so many people getting affected by these weird problems? And I mean, I know it's a new product. And when I first made a video on it, I said, hey, this is a new product. We will be ready for the bugs. However, there seems to be quite a bit of defects with the Oculus Quest 2. For example, my one has this really annoying blue smudge on the left eye here at the very bottom. It is visible when the headset is in a dark, dark environment. Now that's a problem because it's really annoying to see it when you're, let's say, on a loading screen and the screen is just pure black. And I have contacted Oculus, but they want a picture of it. And it's really hard to get a picture of inside the headset on the screen with a camera. Like, it's super hard to do that. But hey, I'll continue trying and I'll keep you guys posted. As for the blurring issues, it's honestly horrible. I hate hearing all these stories about Oculus defects and things going wrong. So if you guys do want to bring any of this to my attention, please let me know down in the comments section below. Chances are I am going to hear it. I am going to see it. And maybe I will even make a video about it. So yeah, no, unfortunately, this, this is a thing and it is happening to quite a few people. So that is going to be it for today's video. A few good news, a few creative news and a few bad news, unfortunately. So if you guys liked today's video, please give it a like. If you guys disliked it, I guess this button works too. But please tell me why down in the comment section below. If you guys want to join on the channel, if you guys want to join the fun, we have a Discord server down in the description below. We also have a Reddit down there. If you guys want to post some spicy memes, I love seeing those. And if you guys want to support the channel in any way, shape or form, mysticalstore.com. My merch is coming soon. The prices have been dramatically dropped and profits are now going towards giveaways. So make sure to check it out down in the description below. If you guys want to be notified about future content, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell. See you again in the next video. Coffee time. Peace.